All right, today we're talking about finding meaning and calling uh, as students move through college and even might look ahead to graduate school or professional school after college. Uh, Rich, you are a faculty member in English and director of the honors program. Nandis, you are a faculty member in finance. And we'll start with you, Rich. Uh, how did you find or create the path that you're on now? Well, uh, there was no path. I didn't find it. I didn't create it. I just wound, wound up on it. Um, I started out at, in undergraduate as a history major. And um, just because I liked history, I didn't really know what I was doing in college. And as I got close to being the end of college, uh, I had a few other friends who were applying to law school. And that sounded interested, interesting. And I knew you could make a lot of money doing it. And so I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Um, my mom at some point had mentioned, Rich, you might seem like a good teacher. And I said, ah, you're a teacher. Why would I ever want to be a teacher? And they didn't make enough money. So I said, no, I'll, I'll go to law school. And so I went to law school and I loved the intellectual engagement of law school. Um, everyone else hated it, hated you know, the questioning, hated the debates. And I thought that was great. Um, but I went to law school because I wanted to help people. And so eventually I worked in a prison legal aid clinic and I worked in the public defender project. And so I went to prison once a week for a year. I, you know, um, did misdemeanor cases in Kenosha County and um, I liked it, but I, one, got tired of losing and two, I was seeing people at their worst moment in their life and it really felt like the, the system was stacked against them. And I was kind of frustrated with that. And then I went back for my third year of law school, not really excited about being in law school. And I worked for an attorney and um, it was a horrible experience, but it was a great experience. It was horrible because I didn't like what he was doing and how he practiced. I didn't think he was a particularly ethical lawyer, but it, it, it showed me that, that I needed to go to a different direction. So I finished law school, graduated, got admitted to the bar, and then had nothing to do. So I did what any person might do is I said, well, I'm going to forget this career stuff. And I just hung out in the city of Chicago, fell in love. And that was great. And then uh, after that, I worked in an elementary school for two years because my mom was on to something and she knew that I actually liked teaching and like dealing with people. And so I learned how to teach special ed kids for two years. And at that point, um, I was like, yeah, I should probably go into education. And so I decided, I looked into it and I could either take me about three or four years to uh, get certified to teach in high school, or it would take, you know, three to 10 years or something like that to teach in college. And I went with the college route because I always liked academics and stuff like that. And so I went back to grad school and um, I went and got a PhD in American studies, which is kind of an interdisciplinary degree. And I did a little bit of cultural studies, a little bit of literature, a little bit of law and put it together. And everyone was very suspicious of me because I was a lawyer. So somehow they thought that I was going to be this evil dark lawyer who was going to do something magical. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, it really was great because I had one foot in the humanities and one foot in the professional schools. And I had a very unusual grad school experience where I was teaching introductory American studies, which was a humanities class. And I was also uh, a TA in business law. So I was TAing in both the business department, business college and the humanities department, which was great. And so when I got to Drury, um, when I was hired actually in something called the Interdisciplinary, Interdisciplinary Study Center, which doesn't exist anymore, I was teaching a lot of general education and doing things across different departments. And so um, it was a strange journey. I never uh, would have guessed I would have wound up in Springfield, Missouri, teaching in an English department because um, I don't even have an English degree, but don't tell anyone. It'll just be our secret. Um, and now that's what I do. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. And uh, Juan Andres, uh, how, how did you find or create the path you're on? Yeah, uh, well, mine was uh, also kind of eclectic. Uh, what I thought it was going to be uh, somewhat structured, it turned out to be, uh, I ended up changing careers a couple of times. So uh, I, as I mentioned in the, in, in the past, uh, you won't even hear some of this, but uh, I went to school in Mexico and the high schools there and the universities are very prescriptive. Uh, you 
uh, the, the high school that I went to was more of a magnet school. So uh, right before my senior year, I had to choose what I wanted to do. And as most uh, juniors, I was about 16 years old or so. So uh, my, uh, I guess my counselor kind of told me, well, it seemed like you'd like engineering and you also like uh, management or you like numbers. So uh, in talking to my family and my friends and other and teachers, I decided I was going to go into engineering. And after some experience, I will probably get a master's degree and become a manager for a company. So that's kind of what I did. I and uh, Now, the only issue was that after I did that, I needed to choose a career within engineering. I had to choose one, what type of engineering. So I chose mining engineering. Part of it was family tradition. Part of it was because I didn't want to do what my brother was going to do. He was a civil engineer. So he was going to grow and build, uh, you know, buildings. And I was going to build tunnels. And uh, you go up, I go down. You go left, I'll go right. I mean, I didn't want to cross his path. Uh, eventually, we were very good friends anyway. But I mean, we're siblings. Uh, but uh, going back to this, I, I I applied, got a, accepted into uh, mining engineering. And within the School of Mining Engineering, there's three paths. One of them could be geology, the other one could be mining engineering, and the other one would be metallurgy. And really, the um, that's practically all you have you could do. Uh, so if I wanted to take an elective in somewhere else, I couldn't do it. Uh, in a way, it was kind of fun because it was a part of a cohort and the advisors were telling us what we needed to do, but I didn't have freedom. Uh, but it was okay at that moment. Uh, what did we did have freedom on was that we were uh, supposed to do internships every year, and within those internships, you would choose different industries, and then decide which one you wanted to go into, uh, uh, or the type of mining you wanted to do. So my first internship was in a coal mine, and it was underground. I didn't like it. Uh, not that I was underground because I ended up working in underground mines. I just didn't like coal mining. It was too dirty and uh, I didn't want to be uh, dealing with methane and those type of things. Uh, but then the next year I did an internship in open pit mine and then I did a couple of underground mines and ended up working for a uh, manganese mine that was highly uh, well mechanized. Uh, it's one of those where you actually go in a vehicle. I, was, I could go in a jeep inside the mine and I was doing rock mechanics, so dealing with engineers and making sure that mine was not uh, was supported. Uh, after a year, I moved to Guanajuato, which is my hometown, and I work at a gold and silver mine. And I worked there for about three years. And towards the last year, I decided it was time to start my master's degree. So my master's degree it was in management, uh, specifically in organizational development. I wanted to look at individuals uh, as individuals not machines and and I thought also there was going to be a skill set that would allow me to move into another industry if I wanted to so it was practically like HR um, so I did I started working on that and then I applied for an exchange program I went ended up in Southern Oregon University I worked my MBA there and since my background was engineering and all of the courses that I had taken like I would take an accounting class but it was accounting for mining engineering and all of the different courses I took were very specific to that. I could not um, transfer all of those. So I had to take all of the core classes for business. So I ended up practically doing another bachelor's degree in, the, in business and then the master's degree. Uh, and because of that, I took some electives and I got a certificate in finance and economics. So that's when I began looking at, okay, finance and economics seems to be a good way to go. It was right before the dot-com boom at mm -hmm. first. Uh, so everything was really exciting. So I wanted to, uh, to get in that field. Um, I graduated and then my wife and I decided that rather than going to Mexico right away, we were going to stop in Texas, probably work at the Maquiladora Industries, which are uh, between plants, uh, that manufacturing plants in, in uh, southern border. Uh, ended up not working there, but working at the Center for Business and Economic Development at the university that was actually helping companies. And we were uh, helping them develop training programs and helping them get training grants from the government. So it was quite exciting um, because I was doing some of the things that I, want, I liked doing before. And, but then I started moving around. I shifted into student services. Um, 
Uh, actually, before that, we did some retraining programs for dislocated workers, people that had lost their jobs uh, because their companies had actually moved their operations. So I was highly involved with HR, and a lot of my experience went that route. Uh, ended up in career services, and I began advancing, but then I hit a ceiling where uh, I was told either you get a PhD in EDD or you're going to be stuck if you want to continue here, or you can go to another industry. So it was one of those times when you have to make a decision and my decision was to pursue a PhD. Uh, kind of this, the thoughts that Rich had, like I think I'm, I can do this in three years. Uh, it ended up taking me seven years to finish my PhD because I continued to work uh, while I was doing that. Um, but then I finished and uh, I ended up selecting uh, yeah, it was business, but it's selecting finance as, as a concentration. And some of the research I did uh, at the beginning was related to, uh, I'm at a loss of words right now, it's uh, labor economics. So things related to where are our students going, uh, labor market and stuff like that. But then I kind of picked up once again, um, natural resources. So I did some uh, research based on oil and gas and but how that behaves with oil and gas, uh, actually oil producing countries, All, a lot of it dealing with Latin America. So keeping that in mind. Uh, but at the end, what I really wanted to do was have that interaction with students. I like the research aspect, but I really like the student uh, aspect more. So uh, I started looking for employment. I applied to universities that were uh, with high focus on research first, but I figured that that's not what I wanted to do. And then there was an opportunity to come here to Bury, and it was like, okay, this is exactly what I want. Uh, they're teaching business, but they're, they value other things as well. Uh, they're teaching students to see things in different perspectives. And that was something that I really cared about because I knew what it was to be part of a school where everything is too narrow and too specialized, which can be really good if you want to be a specialist. But uh, the way things are now, everything's changing. And it was more about teaching them to be adaptable. And that's what I, uh, and I knew that I, that, that I was adaptable and I had to be adaptable uh, to change careers. So uh, I love that we, uh, that uh, to be here at Drury, I love that students have to take classes from other areas. And, and that's why I ended up here. But yes, it's a very diverse background. But I think that at the end, uh, it used to be that I would question myself, why did I study engineering? I should have gone straight into business. But then ended up realizing that it, in order for me, I mean, that actually those skill sets helped me a lot in graduate school. So it helped me understand industry, helped me understand that in a different perspective. So all of that ends up helping you. Right. Well, you really see it in both of your journeys. Well, thank you so much. I know students are going to enjoy uh, hearing about your experiences, and uh, there's lots of food for thought for them uh, as they find their own way. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.